Today we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations, which are equations of this form, which have got an x squared in them. Up until now, you've been doing things with just plain x's and numbers, and you've been able to quite easily get all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other, and then solve. And you actually can't, you're going to find, if you try that with this, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to get all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the other, and then solve. So we're going to have to have a special way to solve these. And the, but before we get there, the important thing we need is a particular property. And it's a property that zero has. And here's the story. If two numbers multiply together to give you zero, you can know for sure that either this is zero or that's zero, right? Because there's only that's the only way you can get zero as an answer of multiplying them. So if you know that a times b gives you zero, you know that either a is zero or you know that b is zero. And that's a very special property of zero. That is very important. You can see you wouldn't be able to do it with 12, right? Two numbers multiply together give you 12. You can't say, well, this is 12 or that's 12, or even that this is 6 or something, because it could be 6 times 2, it could be 12 times 1, it could be 3 times 4, it could be 24 times half. You actually can't tell anything, right? There's nothing that you can come straight out and say about what A is or B is straight away from this, right? You just know their product is 12. But with 0, you know that one of them must be 0. And this special property of zero is going to help us. Because, have a look here. If I know that 4x multiplied by 3x plus 10 is zero, that special property of zero just tells me that I know 4x is zero or 3x plus 10 is zero. And so I can immediately then say, okay, if 4x is zero, this is the same as you've been doing all along. x is 0 divided by 4, which is just 0. Or 3x is equal to minus 10. And so x is going to be minus 10 over 3. So if this times this equals 0, then either x is 0 or x is minus 10 over 3. Try this one for yourself. If these two things multiply together to give you zero, what does B have to be? Pause the video and try. Okay, did you do this? You say, look, you know that because they multiply together to give you zero, you know that that's zero or that's zero, and then you know, let's put in the or, so then you know B is 10, or you know B is minus 5. Nice and simple. And this is where all that factorizing we've been practicing is going to help us, because... If we want to solve this equation and say where's x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0, what we can do is the minute we see an x squared, right, and we want to solve the equation, what we want to do is put a 0 on the right and factorize. So we're going to factorize this here, and you've got lots of practice in doing this now, so hopefully by now that's really easy. So once you've factorized, you know that this times this gives you 0, and so you know that x plus 3 is 0, or x plus 2 is 0, and so x is minus 3, or x is minus 2. The only thing to be, so it's simple as that, the only thing to be slightly careful of is here, you see we see the x squared, we think, oh yes, factorized, da la but before we factorize, we must have the 0 on the right. And here they haven't got a 0 on the right. But of course we can take care of that. We can say x squared plus 3x. And we add 2 here to get 0. So we add 2 to the other side of the equation. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Right. Now we're in the situation where we've got an x squared expression equal to zero so we know that we can factorize and you should be very happy with factorizing by now and so then you can say x plus 2 equals zero or x plus 1 equals zero and x is minus 2 or x is minus 1. So very important you have that equals to zero. Okay quickly pause the video and try these for, for yourself now um, and then we'll go over them. All right, these ones were nice and easy. You had the equals to zero, so you can just factorize. You know this difference of squares, right? So you factorized like that, and then you straight away say that is zero, 
or that is zero. And so you get m is four or negative four. Again, this next one, terribly easy because you've already got that equals to zero on the right, so you didn't even have to do any work there. You factorize this, and hopefully, again, this one was easy. It's actually a square, right? X plus seven, X plus seven. So here you're going to say, look, you can be boring, and you can say X plus seven is zero or X plus seven is zero, and so you'd get X is negative seven or X is negative seven, right? But you don't really need to write it twice, right? X is just negative. 7. And just a last quick thing around the kind of words that do get used in this connection. Often we'll just say solve the equation, y squared plus 10y is 0, but they do often use another way of saying that, um, and this is just another sort of vocab for you to know. They sometimes just ask you to find the roots of the equation, y squared plus 10y is 0. When they ask you to find the roots of the equation, it's just another way of asking you to solve the equation. So it's just different words, but all it means is we must solve the equation. So here we go, we've got a quadratic equation, in other words, we've got an equation with the squared, right? So we know we've got to have equals zero on the right and then factorize. Here we take out a common factor of y, and so we get y is zero, or y plus 10 is zero, so we have y is zero, or y is negative 10.